Trivets are popular items around the house. You can take a hot casserole or whatever, and uh, you don't want to place it directly on a tabletop. You want something to protect that tabletop, and a trivet is a way of doing that. This one's unusual. Most trivets I've seen are either round or square. This one's got five sides, and it's got feet. Nice little scroll saw project. I'll show you how to make it from this set of plans, step by step. If you've watched many of my videos, you know that my favorite method of attaching patterns to wood is scroll saw tape. I've found nine different methods for attaching patterns, and I'll leave a link to my video on the subject on the screen and in the description in case you'd like to learn more. I'll also leave a link to my source for the scroll saw tape. This is a two-sided tape. You unroll it and stick it to one side of the wood, then use a utility knife to cut it to width. Then you add more tape as needed to cover the whole board. Next, you peel off the backing and attach your patterns. You must ensure the patterns aren't flat with no air bubbles or creases. I'm making a couple of changes to the plans. First, the plans call for a quarter inch thick material, but I'll use half inch. The only quarter inch material I have on hand is Baltic birch plywood, and I wanted a better looking hardwood. I had a nice piece of four quarter sapele on the shelf and wanted to use that. I couldn't resaw this board to quarter inch because the pattern requires material about seven and a half inches wide, and between my table saw and bandsaw, I can only resaw to a little under six inch wide boards. Second, the plan showed slot and tab construction for the feet, but I didn't feel that was necessary. I find slot and tab a pain to make, and they would have added the step of needing to resize the slots because I'm using half inch material rather than one quarter. The glue should be plenty strong to hold the feet in place. I laid out the patterns for the top, backer, and feet on one board about 8.5 inches wide and 16.5 inches long. I'll go to one of my drill presses to drill the pilot holes in the top, and I'll use my radial arm saw to cut the board in half. The patterns will be much easier to cut on the scroll saw as smaller pieces. It's about 10 after 6 on a Saturday evening, and I'm getting a little tired as well as being too warm. It's late September, but the high temperature today was 90 degrees, which is unseasonably hot for northern Illinois. I'm not even going to try to do all the cutting for this trivet. I'll just work until either my energy level or discomfort level tells me it's time to call it a night. I started with the feet since these will be quick, easy cuts. They had flat, straight tops and bottoms since I won't be using the tab and slot construction. The sides are curved to give them a more interesting shape than if they were rectangles. I moved on to the backer next. Since I'm not using the slots and tabs for the feet, the backer will be just one long cut. This is a half inch thick material on the border between choosing a number five or a number seven blade for the cut. I already had a number five Pegasus modified geometry blade in the saw from my last project, so I decided to leave it in place to see how it worked for this project. When I choose a blade size, I take into account the thickness of the material, the hardness of the wood, and the complexity of the pattern. For more in-depth discussion of this subject, I'll leave a link to my video about it on the screen and in the description. The number five blade is working fine, so I'll leave it in. A number seven would cut faster, but I'd rather have the number five in place when I move on to those more intricate interior cuts on the inside of the trivet's top. Cutting this backer is just a matter of following the cut line and letting the blade do the work. This is one of those places where it's easy to start putting extra pressure on the blade to make it cut faster, but all it really does is cause the blade to flex so you don't get a straight cut. This is also likely to cause the blade to overheat and burn the wood or cause the blade to break. There was enough material left around the edges of this board to make it worth trimming and saving three of the pieces. Sapele costs about twice as much per board foot as oak, and I don't like to let any usable pieces go to waste. These pieces are big enough that I can fit one or two animals for Noah's Ark on each of them. I decided I wasn't quite ready to quit for the day yet, and that I would get started on the trivet top. I had already drilled the pilot holes using my bench top drill press. If you don't have a drill press, you can do the job with a hand drill. There are five sides to this trivet, making it more interesting than the standard trivet, which is either round or square. There's a circle in the middle, then a design that repeats itself five times to fill in each side. I decided to start cutting with one of the large shapes in the middle of each design. 
From the pilot hole, I cut to one of the lines, then backed the blade back to the pilot hole. This gave me plenty of room to pivot the workpiece 180 degrees so that I could back up the blade again, this time to the corner I just finished cutting to. Now it would be much easier to turn the workpiece to the next direction I wanted to cut, rather than cutting to the corner and trying to cut a very sharp angle. I followed the line up to about the middle of the shape where there was another sharp angle. Rather than try to make that turn, I cut across to the other side, then made a gentle turn that took me to the line that led me back to the point at the bottom of the shape. The waste piece easily popped out, and now all I had left was to cut the top of the shape, which was an easy curve. On either side of that large shape is an elongated oval, but these have two somewhat sharp ends rather than one sharp end and one curved end, like on a teardrop. This type of shape is common enough that I had no doubt about the best way to cut it. From the pilot hole, I cut to one side, then followed the line to one of the pointed ends. I backed the blade up to the pilot hole, then followed the line on the opposite side to that same point. I repeated the procedure on the other side of the shape. I don't know how to describe the next shape. There was a straight line going down to a point, so I made that and then pulled the blade back to the pilot hole. Then I cut down the second side to the point and the waste piece popped out. I now had a half circle to cut that ended next to an angle. I probably could have made that angle because it was around 90 degrees, but I backed the blade up and came at it from the other direction. <laughs> All right, there we go. I just got to do that four more times. That didn't I finished cutting the four additional sets of patterns into the trivet, so now it's time to make the long cut for the outside dimensions. The trivet has the same shape as the backer, it's just smaller. So if you reach back deep into the recesses of your brain to recall your high school geometry class, you may remember that two identical shapes, but which are different sizes, are referred to as similar. If they were the same shape and the same size, they would be referred to as congruent. I'm sure Mr. Keenan would be proud that was still in my head after all these decades. Cutting the pattern is just a matter of following the lines and letting the blade do the work. There are many short curves, so you'll find yourself changing direction frequently. That's why I chose a number 5 blade rather than a number 7, the complexity of the pattern. Though not having tiny cuts, this pattern calls for a change in direction every few seconds, and a smaller blade can handle that more easily. The waste left on the outside of the trivet was too small to make anything else, so I'll toss that in the waste basket. I peeled the pattern off the top, then placed it against the backer to see what the finished product would look like. Now I just need to attach the feet, glue the top to the backer, and then apply a finish after the glued up sections have dried. I used a small glue bottle to spread a bead of glue along the outside edge, then I moved to the inside surfaces. Since this glue is water soluble, I used my fingertip to spread it around. Another advantage of the white glue is that it dries clear, and I buy it in gallon bottles because I use it for most of my projects. I flipped the top over and aligned it with the backer, which is a little larger than the top. I wanted the reveal to be the same on all five sides. There's nothing more frustrating than taking the clamps off a glue up and then noticing the parts weren't aligned properly. Sometimes that means the project was completely ruined and you have to scrap all that work and material and start over. I have plenty of clamps on hand and I decided to use my medium sized spring clamps for this project. The top plus backer adds up to one inch thick, which is pretty much the limit for these, but that means lots of down pressure will be put on the five sides of the trivet. I'll set this aside to dry and then I'll come back and add the feet. With the top and backer assembly dry, the last step of the glue up is to add the feet. I decided not to use the slot and tab construction at the beginning of the project, so this will be an easy step. I put a bead of glue on each foot, spread it around with my fingertip, then placed one foot diagonally across each of the five sides. The assembly was now too thick for my spring clamps. I briefly considered using F clamps, but rejected that idea. The drawback to F clamps is that while you're tightening them, the circular motion of the clamping pad tends to move parts out of alignment. Since the feet will be on the bottom of the assembly, they could move while I was applying clamps, and I wouldn't be able to tell they'd been moved out of alignment. I used another clamping method that works great on flat surfaces. 
Once the feet were all attached, I carefully flipped the trivet over. It was now sitting flat on its five feet, and I applied pressure to the top in the form of a one-gallon glue bottle. I'll let the trivet sit until the glue dries, then I'll give it a couple quarts of warm set and spray poly. Here's the completed trivet. I enjoyed making this, and I think it looks great in Sapele, but you could make one from any hardwood you choose. There are a lot of cuts, but they're large enough that a beginner could make the project. Please give me a thumbs up if you like the video, as it helps me grow my channel. I respond to every comment, so please feel free to leave one. And of course, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you'll be notified whenever I post a new video. But you don't have to wait till then. A link to a suggested video to watch next is on the screen right now.